<laughs> Today we are going to talk about talk a little FFD ADP, and we're going to break the FFD ADP review up into too high and too low. Yeah. And it just begs the question is, is, is can you be too high? That's for sure. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. for sure. Once that couch gets real long when you've been laying on it and it's just the couch is super long, you're too high. <laughs> like, it's, it's, you're like yeah, I can't get out of this couch. Too long and, and too uh, too hard to get up. You need a rope <laughs> then you're, yeah, yep. I can't pull over any for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so. We're going to uh, kind of roll through this. This is our ADP that we've been creating with the patrons and, and some public people on Twitter. So if you're not uh, fucking with the FFD on Twitter, um, you can check us out at the FFD or at the FF Dynasty rather. And then on Patreon, uh, you go to patreon.com backslash the FF Dynasty. Um, we're, we're putting together mocks after mocks after mocks. And then we're doing live mocks on, I think we're going to be on Tuesday nights or Monday nights at, at 930 uh, we'll be hitting you with some live mocks here uh, a few times a month. So again, make sure you like, subscribe, all that jazz. Uh, so, you know, we're not we're gonna get into just like we always do ADP reviews. We're not gonna get into like super in depth, you know, yards per target and all sorts of crazy. We're going surface level kind of review, and I'm sure we'll have some discussions. Uh, so, uh, I brought two guys. Jason brought two guys, and Big T brought two guys uh, that that were too high on. I might uh, just do one because I might go with top five on oh, the okay. title. Uh, right, still figuring out what it is you guys who's like your, the who's most. Who's your one guy? I don't know. I'll go last. All right. I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm going to throw Kenny Walker and E.T. up there. Uh, who, oh, who, who do go you got? Tigers. Who you got, Big D? Um, I'm going Higgins and Mixon. I'm going to go all Bengals. Higgins and Mixon too high. Okay. All right. Listen, enough with the Tigers, okay? They're not too high, okay? <laughs> I'm going to go Chris Olave. Oh, whoa. All right. Whoa. Um, so there's our five. Uh, you got a list. Um, <laughs> now you can tune out. Now, now we're good. Um, so <laughs> we but, got a lot more just to let you know. But might for real. go with like 39 yeah. too low guys. All right. So we're going to go through and actually discuss some stuff. But we wanted to throw, throw some guys who were too high at you right off the rip. So our title isn't a lie. Mm-hmm. Um, but... <laughs> Uh, so let's let's get it Got rolling here. It. Let's get it rolling here, and we will of course adri- address those guys that we uh, just talked about. So uh, as we're as we're rolling through here, we're scrolling like the yodeler on uh, on <laughs> what's Price, is right. Price is Right. Yodel. 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 Um, the first guy we yodel to is Garrett Wilson. He's at two oh six, wide receiver five. Is that is that is that too high? Is that Le'Veon Bell? A little too high. Maybe Josh Gordon. A little too high for, for anybody in the room. He's a bit challenging for me. I I look in that second round where he's going. What, what do we have him at in our FFD ADP? We got him at 206. Right. Uh, so middle of the second round. I, I mean, I don't mind it. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, for me, I think he's about right. What about you guys? Um. I, so I, I think it, it may be a little too high on on merit alone. Uh, but I don't, but like I said, I don't really, or kind of like you're alluding to, I think a little bit of, of really finding a, a, a person that I would be like, yeah, I definitely have this guy over him. You know, I, I Garrett had a, had a great season We're we're thinking that we're going to come in and he's going to be the wide receiver one for New York. And, and he was, you know, very good through stretches when he had, uh, you know, any semblance of, of decent quarterback play. Um, and sometimes even without, so you know the idea that Garrett Wilson is is a sell right now for a lot of people in the community or the lot of big fantasy guys is you know I can understand it because I think both of us are sitting here saying that I think it is a little too high but I, I think out of out of what the expectations of what could be and that I can't necessarily come over here and say that I would really I could pinpoint any one player that I would say a hundred percent I would definitely take him over him like I'd probably I'm fine with saying Kyler Murray or Dak Prescott over him. Because if, you're, yeah. if we're we're talking super flex tight end premium, obviously, uh, is is the ADP that we're reviewing. Brees Hall is ahead of him. I'm down with that. Um, JT's ahead of him. I'm down with that. McCaffrey's behind him. St. Brown's behind him. You know, if if I'm fine with that. If yeah, yeah, you could make an argument that maybe St. Brown is a little safer kind of moving forward. We'll see how the Garrett Wilson and the Laporta kind of average into the the target ratio of of where um, St. Brown kind of ends up this season and next. And then, you know, next, then you're down to Olave and Tyreek Hill for receiver wise and McCaffrey. So, you know, 
I can't make a strong argument. It feels too high, but I can't really make an argument for anything to say that, yeah, I would definitely take this guy over him. So, right. again, the sentiment of, of a lot of uh, the consensus is saying sell him. And it's like, yeah, I, you know, I guess if you could go from Garrett Wilson to say somebody that you like, like, uh, you know, I, I personally like a Drake London. If you could go and get something egregious to go from Garrett Wilson to Drake London, then I'm fine with that. But I don't know that that's a, an actual thing that would really happen. Like, I don't, I, you know, if it's if it's anything minuscule, uh, uh, just some OK players or anything less than a first, like I'm just going to hang on to Garrett Wilson. Like we like that Aaron Rodgers is there, hopefully for two years. Hopefully after that, we have we figure out another quarterback situation and and we're it, it worked. It hit for you. Garrett Wilson did what you wanted him to do. And now it seems like we're kind of upset about it. Uh, that he's maybe slightly overpriced and priced at his ceiling. And it's like, well, you know, really, if if we're talking about it, like really the question is, is which one of these guys do we think could encroach on Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase territory? And Garrett Wilson, certain like he, he would be one of the favorites that I would say could do that. So, you know, I'm not dying to get rid of that guy. Like Jalen Waddle would be another one for me that I think could encroach on that kind of territory as maybe him and Tyreek swap places at some point where he's a little bit more of the alpha and Tyreek is a little bit more of the, the, the two there. So, you know, I guess that's kind of my, my stance there. Um, you know, I, I, yeah. I could, I could say if I really wanted to take a tight end there and tight end premium of 1.5 or two points and, and we throw, I get, I'm fine. I know nobody's going to like it, but like, I'm still okay with taking Kyle Pitts up there. Like Kyle Pitts bounces back a little bit and he's going to be right back up there. Um, and you know, Pitts is one of those guys who, if he starts having good seasons, he will be up in the first round of, you know, tight end premium drafts and maybe even on tight end premium. So that, that would be an example of somebody that could come up for me and Kyler and Dak and ours would maybe be somebody that I would jump up there. So, yeah, yeah or fine. another example of, sorry, Jay, Go another ahead. example of the team build, right? Is you got Lamar at one Oh six and then in our, in our ADP. And then that means the Lamar owner got Garrett Wilson. I, I wouldn't mind pairing him with Mark Andrews to get the stack there as well. Mm -hmm. That might be a little high for Andrews, but I don't think he's going to come back to me at the, you know, the three, would that be the 306 um so uh, yeah i don't think he's going to come I, I i don't know if he'll be there at 306 so if i want to guarantee that stack that in a tight end premium you know that that mm -hmm. might be something that i would do as well so all right now for the 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 genius what what is it jay who's that oh <laughs> uh, i i don't think i have a problem with gary wilson's adp right there i mean i i'm down with kyler and dak i guess super flex like you said and and i was thinking to myself like I, should i say i'd rather have kyle pitts i don't i don't think i would at this point uh I, I could see you doing it i'm fine with it but i think you could wait a little bit on that so i think i was gonna bring it up in the fifth round about is this a good spot to trade back this is probably another good spot the middle of the second round if you could if you could move back a little bit here uh see i'm 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 okay with just taking a shot on one of these guys here yes i, I could move back a little bit but I, I don't really like the next little bit of range either that that early mid three is not my favorite either so it'd be it'd have to be a pretty big move back i'd rather i think i'd rather just pick in that spot there and take your garrett wilson or a quarterback or pitts or whoever you you like uh even if it's waddle if you want to move waddle up that high like i could be i'm down with Waddle. i like waddle a lot because i like i said i think he's one of those guys who could be up there with top competition he has the skill to do so so um you know i don't think too high on garrett wilson necessarily seems like a fairly consensus there Chris Olave, he's the next wide receiver off the board. He So St. Brown will go, Waddle will go, McCaffrey will go, Bryce Young, Pitts, and then Olave. So that was too high for you? Yeah. When you get down here into the 302 and we're looking at Chris Olave, I just, I'm not usually, haven't been looking at Chris Olave doing these drafts. Uh, I'm more looking at T. Higgins or, which, spoiler alert, which we already said, that's on these guys' is too high list. Uh, but I think... I could take a swing on Gibbs. I could, I could be down with Drake London. I like J Jackson Smith and Jigba, Tyreek Hill. I think I, I think I'm in on all those guys probably over Olave. So those are that's where I'm looking at in the, in that part of the round. I'm never really looking at Olave. So that was kind of why he was my one guy to round out the top five. Yeah, like I, like I said a minute ago while we were discussing Garrett, like th this would start to be as an uh, area where I would start to try to move back so I could because I do like that next tier of Gibbs, JSN, Devonta, London, you know, 
even Cooper Cup a little further down. So that would be a this would be a spot in that draft in the early threes, mid threes, where I'd be trying to move back. What are your your thoughts on Olave, Big D? I'm hearing exactly what you guys are saying here. I, I think that part of part of the third round picks, especially those early third round picks, w- w- our ADP reflects a third round reversal. So I think it's something that we should kind of point out here. And sure. I think when you think about it that way, you know, that means the team 11 and 12 are kind of building their team. And what what are they building with at the back half of it? And uh, I can see them, you know, maybe maybe on that 12th, you know, if you're in the, the final slot, they're going doing a running back something build and then coming back and swinging with the lobby to kind of anchor down. And, and I, I definitely don't hate the value, but I'm kind of with Jay. I, I think there's enough names around him that are kind of behind him that I think that I would probably go with them over a lobby. But I mean, you know, the thing about Garrett Wilson and Olave are they're, they're two up and coming superstars. It, it feels like. So I, I think taking the value, even if you're not sold on who they are, I think there's so much insulated value yeah. there that you can, you can get out pretty easily as well. So, yeah, I think that's a good point. And I think the third round reversal is a good point. Like, like, let's say you took, let's say you took uh Deshaun Watson and uh, you know, Anthony Richardson, or you could throw Kyler Murray in there or, you know, whatever, maybe those were your back-to-backs and then Olave is your third pick as your little anchor down. You know, I, like you were saying, I like that, uh, you know, talking about it in that way is, is a good way to look at it. I would say in that range, you know, I like, I like Pitts, which is one before him. And I like Andrews, which is one after him and Olave. So out of those guys, I'm, I'm down to, to kind of take Olave there. I, I don't necessarily love it, but I don't hate it. Mostly, because I do like the player a decent amount. I reversed course on him. Didn't like him as the rookie profile necessarily. I thought he was a little soft. But as soon as he got on the field and you could see what he was doing, you know, you, you had to you had to turn that around. Um, and I traded for him in a, in a few spots. But I do think the value is so good and so insulated that there isn't really too much worry with either one of those guys for me to to whenever you feel like you want to move, you you could if you so choose. It's definitely not a bad pick. Uh, I'd like to point out, if you're watching on YouTube, um, what you're looking at here is the sleeper ADP. So you can use sleeper ADP when you're doing your mocks and your drafts. That's that's the order. It's always important to know the list and the order of players on whatever platform you're drafting on and then look for values within that list, right? We have our ADP list that we like to look at um, where he's uh, 302, which is 26 overall. On sleeper ADP, he's up at uh, 24, so it's even it's even value a little bit more there. Dak Prescott's below him, you know. So uh, I think even with being a couple spots up in sleeper, that's something else to take in consideration. He's higher there. Um, yeah. Not mad if you want to take him. I just haven't taken him. I'm looking at other guys there, and he he always gets taken before I really get a chance to contemplate should I take Chris Olave here. So. Yeah. So big big D, let's keep it moving here. You you have an interesting one here. Uh, Travis Kelsey was was a little high for you. Uh, what what are your thoughts there? Yeah, this is mostly you know when I'm when I'm looking at building a fantasy team, I, I definitely am oftentimes shooting to win. But but Travis is at that age where it's just for me, it's just way too much risk there. Um, I I know that he's you know he's he's <laughs> he's Zeus right. He's going to be just p- producing points until he decides to retire at whatever age that is, but. I just think for the third player on my team in a dynasty build, I'm, I, it's really hard for me to pull the trigger on on Kelsey at um, what is he thirty? He's thirty three. He'll be thirty four in October. Yeah. So he, I mean, he's at you know, and I know you know tight ends can often produce to thirty five. You know, at times, uh, in, especially with Kelsey and Mahomes, how they're. They seem to be in sync, um, doing a little boy band dance. No, but I, I mean, I, I just feel like he, as my third player on my my team in a startup, I, I there's just too many other options around that I think that I would go with over over Kelsey there, um, and and it feels like super high to me. I mean, I think he's maybe fourth or fifth round, maybe even fifth round for me um, from a where I would pick him. So obviously he's never never on my team, but um, I don't know. What do you boys think? I, I pretty I understand where you're coming from uh, and it's just it is a, a tough pill to swallow in the third round like you said your third player is third basically 34 years old I mean you know Tony Gonzalez who was a chief and then went to be a Falcon played for a long time and was productive for a while but how long does the product productivity stay up at the level where you're getting the return for the third round he did just have his best year granted there was an extra game 
but overall PPR wise, he just had his best year. And, right. And Tyree Kill leaving there certainly probably padded a little tiny bit, but sure. <clears throat> he's old. He's a different specimen. I've been missing him for a few years now. Yeah, uh, I've, I've been, been the opposite. I've him. been on him hot and heavy, and I think this is the first time where I'm a little nervous. Just because age, you got to be, right? Yeah. 34 in October. It's a real concern. Yeah. I'm always looking at Pitts and Andrews when it comes to the tight ends this early. Like, yeah, you can. Andrews, Andrews is 29. Is 27 or 8. I don't even think he's 29. And Pitts is obviously a very young unicorn. Yeah, he's. 27 on sleeper right now so he, he probably turns 28 this year he turns so. 28 september 6th yeah about to be 28 uh, all right so let's keep it moving uh Tua would be the next guy up on the list 35 qb 14 anybody got a problem with Tua there yeah it's the same thing for me with just the risk the risk side of Tua. other you know with the health scare and that that kind of thing obviously the system that he's in um, in Miami and the and the just <laughs> absolute blazing speed that's all around him, you know. I mean, like he's in a good spot, but I just uh, for me, it's just it's too concerning for him. At, at three oh five, most likely he's my second quarterback, so I guess it's it's okay. But um, I I think that I would rather pivot to a wide receiver or running back in that spot over over to a or maybe even take a, a swing at like. You know, um, it, 305 is too early to take a swing at Daniel Jones, who I love. But, but you know, so somebody like that or go, wait and get later, get Kirk Cousins or or somebody who's going to produce this year and figure out my um, QB2 later. But, yeah, I, I, just for me, his his profile uh, and, and the way that he um, – the way that that team can score points, I definitely understand it. It's just for me, I just I, I just can't do it. I didn't like him when he was in that mid second to late second, but now we're we're moving into the mid mid thirds, and now I'm a little bit more okay with with taking the shot just because if he if he does, which it is a concern and it is a risk, and I don't love pulling the trigger there, but if I if I felt like I was in a little bit of a jam quarterback wise, it just hadn't worked out for me so far. I'd be fine with with pulling the trigger there. I do think that you'll be able to move around a little bit with him. With that being said, like if I drafted a CJ Stroud or a Bryce Young, like that would, you know, I'd probably feel a little bit more comfortable that the other person isn't worried about an injury with those guys and that I'd be willing to move off of those guys for plus Daniel Jones, basically. You know, same thing that people are talking about with Garrett Wilson. Same thing that we've talked about with quarterbacks. You know, we draft. You, I've been talking about it with Stroud and, and Young. Like, I'm fine with drafting them where they are, and then I'd probably tear down because I think Daniel Jones is is probably going to score at least as many points as there. I mean, I can get I can get plus 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 on on that trade. So, you know, Tua has more risk attached to him because of the injury, but I think he's going to put up top six eight quarterback points. So, and you saw the the ceiling that he could right. have, it, which now is you're, ridiculous. But your trade man. market might be a little bit more tenuous. I guess it is. Kind of what People I was are getting a scared at. of him, uh, but. If, you know, if it wasn't for the injury risk at all, you know, well, I'd have it, no problem with this. If right? it wasn't, if there wasn't an injury risk and he played most of the season last year, he'd be a back end of the first round pick. Right. And in our ADP is 305, 29th overall. In Sleeper's ADP, he's at 41, which is the 405. So fourth round Tua. Yeah, fourth round, much, fourth round Tua, I'm well, really yeah, into. Much better. I'm in, I'm in for fourth round Tua. But I'm, yeah, I'm, I think I'm okay with, with five, but I, I understand it. And, um, and how I've how I played this is in those first two rounds, I'm trying to get at least one quarterback. And then what I've learned through doing all these mocks is that you can get a second quarterback a little later. You don't have to reach for that second one. As long as you get one, then you don't ha then I'm never taking a second one of these guys. I've never, I haven't taken any rookie except maybe Anthony Richardson. Uh, I right. haven't taken Tua in any, and any of these mocks. That's the idea of why we are using the third round reversal. And, and what we do is that those first seven picks, if you just happen to get lucky and get one of those, it seems like an advantage. So in the third round, cause you like now I'm really not worried about a quarterback. Like I, I, if I get us, if, if Kyler ends up being somewhere back in that back half of the second round, then I, you know, maybe I take a swing on him uh, or I do take a swing on him or Dak or somebody moves back there. Like I'm fine with it. Uh, but the third round reversal helps maybe balance some of that out where the third round guy now gets an, a little bit bonus for not having, you know, just drawn the 12th pick or the 11th pick and not being able to maybe get, you know, one of the top guys. So that's, that's kind of why we use that uh, just as a little explanation there. So uh, let's keep it moving here. CJ Stroud, Tyree kill. Um, 
you know, who is just going to put up points. And then T Higgins is next. And I know T was on your all Bengals hate list. Um, <laughs> what, uh, what's the beef, bro? I, I, I kind of feel you on this one. Uh, I, I would say he, he'd be a little too high for me too, much like Jay was saying with Olave, usually not crossing my mind, uh, in that mid third, uh, for me. Yeah. I mean, again, for me, and, and I think a lot of this is how I, I kind of build my teams. I just, I don't know if, again, the third player off the board, if I want Higgins as my, if I want Higgins as my third there, because I, I feel like, you know, I, I'm probably reaching for a running back or, um, you know, depending on how the draft's going, I'm, I'm reaching for a quarterback. Um, and, and then I look at the, if we look at our ADP or FFD ADP, and I look under that, like, uh, JSN, uh, London, Smith, Metcalf, like I, I think all those players there, I would rather have over Higgins. Um, just from a long-term perspective, I, I don't know where Higgins is going to be in a couple years. He, I don't know if he's going to be a Bengal. I think he could be a one other places, but I, I feel like I know that London and I know Metcalf for sure are, are, are players that I, I could put in that spot. I could get the next round and 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 feel good about my in in my mind what would be probably my rb i mean my wide receiver two possibly my wide receiver one but um depending on the build but yeah just just higgins in general like he he's he's very hit or miss for me and and i could be way off the mark with him to be completely honest because he's he's never quite made it for me and which is kind of odd because i do like a lot of wide receiver twos um on a lot of teams but but for for some reason higgins just hasn't you know, has, hasn't made my, hasn't made my list of, I have to have them on. In fact, I actually was just kind of looking pre-show. I don't think I have one single share of them and I've never drafted them. I've never had them on my team. So I guess I hate them. I, I, mm. I didn't realize I did, but I guess I do. So mm. I hate all of this. Yeah. I, I mean, don't like it. I, I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I totally disagree with I, you guys. I'm not sure that I have, um, very much T Higgins anywhere, mostly because, it, it's always been a little uh, off the rip. I was very into T Higgins and I thought that the, in the rookie drafts and the first season, very obtainable, uh, just didn't work out. And if I do have them somewhere, I'm drawing a blank right now. It's, it's because of that. It hasn't been in a trade because the market has been, you know, fairly strong on T for the most part. But, you know, I think he was wide receiver 12 and he's gone. He went down to a wide receiver 26, I believe, uh, this year, 18 overall um, on sleeper. I think you're basically drafting a wide receiver two here with potential wide receiver one upside. And I just He's th- in a contract year. There's they some, haven't extended him. I don't some, know if they can pay both those boys. They're gonna probably pay both of those guys. Um I, and and, it, and you can't say that for sure. I just you know, again, in in this area outside of those tight ends, outside of Andrews and and, and maybe if Pitts is hanging around and, and Olave, it's probably a little bit of a trade down for me because I do like that fourth round uh, pool a little better and end of the third round pool a little better than what I'm seeing in that, you know, CJ Stroud, Tyree kill, which I'm fine with taking Tyree kill uh, changes my build a little bit at that point, uh, Mm -hmm. what I'm doing. But then T Higgins, it just feels like it's kind of a neutral play. Like, I'm just like, all right, like this, it's probably going to be good some weeks and then it's going to be, I just, I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't feel like I'm. I want to invest my third player into T. Higgins for for me right. uh, personally. And I know that there's there's those wide receiver glow up games that he has. Um, I just He's so consistent. It's just like a like a thirteen point floor and two touchdown upside. And he's in. He's got I don't one know that so consistent is is a word that I would use. There's a couple games where he goes out early, and it's a real big bummer for you in fantasy. And if you take away those games, it's a ridiculous, like... I think he has some good games and he has some flurry games. He also has some games where he isn't hurt, where he doesn't, sh- where he's just invisible for whatever reason. I don't yeah. think it's necessarily his fault. I think it's just that he plays with a guy who dominates on the other side. And, you know, we don't really know exactly how it's going to shake out here this year. And maybe, maybe he does, uh, you know, get a different contract somewhere else. It would seem like I'm not really sure why you would... Uh, pivot off of those if you're the Bengals, you got to figure out a way to basically bring both of those guys back because for your actual team it's awesome like there's there's right. no reason that you shouldn't want higgins and, and chase and like you said i mean i think i'm just a little bit 
it, it just seems like it's priced a little too high for me right here. Um, and like I said, I, I haven't dug into all the metrics for this particular show here because it's a little more surface level. I mean, all you have to um, do is look at the reception perception from this last year. And right. There's really nothing else to argue right. about. Which is good. And I, I know I know he's, he's called you my wife's name. I know he's pretty good. I know he's he's a good player. I know he's a, a really good player. I just strong, strong player. I would just, you know, if if you're going to let me get 24, uh, you know, Drake London a little later, I'll, I have no problem doing that. And, and you know, I would rather have JSN uh, than, than T Higgins. Um, I'd probably rather have Jamar Gibbs than T Higgins. Um, you know, depending on where your build's going, Diggs is basically anywhere from wide receiver one to wide receiver five. Like if, uh, you know, he's a little later and you could get him Cooper cups right behind him. And that, that changes your, your build up a little bit, but that's, you know, anywhere from wide receiver one, if he's healthy to wide receiver three, if he's healthy, probably, um, right. You know, so there, I think there's just some better options that and, and T's obviously younger than those guys, some of those guys I just mentioned, and I just like them a little bit better. So that's, you know, I just I, I have guys I like a little lower and that's what makes it hard for me to pull the trigger. I think it's really as simple as that. We should have two more hands, like four thumbs down. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure there's some T. Higgins guys who are listed and who are you have real some, mad. Let them know in the comments. Have some stats of yards per target. Did you not know that he splits had a with this and splits 80% with that success and, rate on every single route ran, Casey? Right, and I'm, I'm I let it off with we're just we're going surface level and and uh, we're talking about yeah, it's just kind of gut feel, and and I I do think that Higgins is set up where he could have a pretty great year, you know, depending yeah. on what's going on with Mixon. I mean, uh, at the tight end position, what they've got, Big Irv is in there now, Irv Smith, and mm -hmm. and that, but I, I don't know target wise where they're where else they would go besides Chase and Higgins. You know right. what I mean? Like right. it, it feels like that offense could easily roll through uh roll through those wide receivers without even without an injury, right? Without something uncommon. So I definitely can see why people do it, where the build is, what, what, what makes sense. But just from the surface level for me, it just, there's always one or two players on there that it just, yeah, yeah. I, it's a little bit sweeter for me that I just can't pull the trigger. I on. think I, I'm not sure why. I think that's a good summation. It's, it's not necessarily about T Higgins. Cause I think, you know, I think he's a wide receiver too with wide receiver one upside and that, you know, yep. that's not a bad play right there for you. Um, but I uh, like I said, and and you then wrapped up again with there's just some guys a little bit lower than him that that I would I'd rather go down to. We got Cooper Cup, DK, Kenneth Walker. So Kenneth Walker at four three. We've talked about him on like the last show or so we did. Uh, just just still a little market price too high for me for uh, what is basically the T Higgins of running backs, uh, you know, he's a running back too. He should be priced a little bit lower, closer to a running back too, with running back one upside. And, you yeah. know, and we need to see with, with T at least we've seen coexistence, uh, like the bumper sticker, uh, cohesion, you know, with, with cohesion Kenny, we're, we're, we're still just a little unsure. So I, I, I got to take a wait and see and, and pump the brakes on Kenny at four, three RB seven for me, uh, st still a little too rich for my blood. Yeah. I mean, four, three is a little, it is, I, I was trying to think about what you were saying and, and how we, he's the T Higgins of wide receivers. And I almost feel like maybe T Higgins and Walker are the Tua of quarterback, right? Like their floor is okay, but they have these really boom, boom games, but their consistency is kind of off. And maybe that's kind of why I shy away from players like that. It's just from the consistency perspective that uh, both of those teams, all three of those players have the ability to take over and win a fantasy week. In my opinion, I know Walker is now going to be sharing the backfield, but he's got home run speed. I mean, it only takes you know, two great plays in a, in a game and he's solidified your RB one spot. So, right. Um, but at the same token, like the, the way that I feel like when I have them in my lineup, I just don't feel as comfortable. So maybe, maybe there's something to it as I, as I have the psychology session with you, with you boys here. Uh, yeah. Going well, that's, back and forth, so. that's what we're doing. We're not just giving you a list. We're going to actually come through here and talk through here and conversate. And the five guys that we listed off the top might end up going, eh, you know, maybe it is all right. Like that's kind of what we're doing. Fantasy isn't played in black and white. It's played in all sorts of context and all sorts of build and all sorts of situations. So it's, it's hard to just 
give you those five names, even though that's the title that that you that that the, the YouTube's wants and you guys wants and and, and the headline. Uh, but we're always going to have a conversation, you know, nine times out of ten about these kind of things. Uh, so we'll keep it moving. Travis ETN was again a high one for me. I I would if I had to, I would swap Walker and ETN. I just feel like the competition behind ETN is a little less lesser than what Kenny and and uh sharps are gonna split up so if i had to switch those guys but i'd like to see both of them uh a little lower i would take josh jacobs and Najee harris and and austin eckler who is the cooper cup of wide receipt of running backs uh you know basically changes your build up a little bit and how you're approaching Mm -hmm. things uh but you know i'd probably take all those guys over him and i know eckler is going to probably be if healthy anywhere from rb1 to rb5 you know (laughs) it's just kind of what it is um He's fucking good, and it's proved. It's been proven. Uh, you know, just been stellar year after year. And then you know, Ramondre would be a guy that I would take. So all those guys, if if Kenny and and Et fall to the back of the fourth, and some of those guys moved up a little bit, like I'd much rather. I'm for, m- way more comfortable taking Josh Jacobs, Najee Harris at the top of those fourth rounds of guys that are you know bona fide RB ones who are are. You know, now we don't know what's going to happen with Jacobs contractually because he's he's kind of talking a little bit how he isn't signed his tender, much like Saquon. But we we don't need to worry about that right now for the sake of conversation. For me of, and Najee, you don't have to worry about it of what's going on right now in this thing. Like Jacobs is, we saw it. Like we were worried about McDaniel's. We're not worried about McDaniel's usage on Josh Jacobs anymore. <laughs> like you know, right. because did, of, did you see that preseason? Did you see game? the Hall of Fame game? Yeah. Um, Najee Harris, we saw the back half of the season went healthy, completely different player, um, you know, and, you know, I'm not hating on Jalen Warren. He's not Najee Harris. And you can get Jalen Warren really cheap uh, in the back end of this draft to if something does happen to Najee. I think Warren is a very good uh, backup. So, you know, I think you got a uh, nice uh, cheap backup ability with uh, and, you know, maybe Zamir steps up for Josh Jacobs if something happens. Uh, so, you know, some cheap options there. But those guys would move up for me. E.T. and, and Walker would move down. Uh, there is a tight end sandwich in the middle of here, which I, I feel like everybody's a little indifferent about in this group is T.J. Hawkinson. Um, he's at 4'8", tight end 4. I would say deservedly so. If you missed out on those top guys, I don't think outside of Goddard and maybe like a, a Waller later, who maybe we'll talk about if we if we have that much time. How much time you got, buddy? You know, I don't know that there's another guy who can who can give you the when you're playing tight end premium. What you want is volume. Volume's going to be king because if you have you know, 100 catches. Right, you're getting 150 points. You're getting 150 points, and I know some people yeah. aren't worried about the the. And that's just well, an easy way to break that up. I know some people aren't worried about the 0.5 premium. It's not even real premium, but yeah, the, when you're getting a lot of targets, like a Darren Waller did a few years ago, he scored like two less points than Devontae Adams did, and he was the wide receiver one overall. So, like, when, when, the, when that amount of volume comes to you, and I believe Hawkinson from when he got traded until week 17 had something like 85 targets, um, you know, and Addison is certainly going to come in and, and eat some of that. We, are all, we, we all believe that Addison could potentially score the most fantasy points out of any rookie wide receiver this year. It's a, it's a good spot for him. Uh, but I think Hawkinson's going to be just fine. So... If you missed and you like taking tight ends, I'm okay with this spot here. Because uh, if you missed, if you haven't taken a tight end already, maybe you already have a quarterback, uh, a, a running back, and a receiver, and now you're now you're taking your tight end as the fourth shot here, and and you don't need to look at the Jacobs and the ETs of the world here. You can you can take your tight end who could potentially be you know one of those elite scoring tight ends that actually does make a difference in premium. I can't say I love it, but I can't argue against it. I don't know why I just don't want to hit the draft button on Hawkinson. I almost like a couple tight ends a little bit later and taking it, you know. And I'm also highly targeting Pitts and Andrews in that third round, you know. Yeah, I think the argument that you could make is that there is a few tight ends a little later that that and and then you could smatter some in in the even late teen rounds that that you know could give you some chances it does seem like there is a middle of the field there that could really rise up and that we could be in the middle of a a nice little tight end hey they're all starting to become more like wide receivers and and being there's not just a few places destinations where they're used the smart coordinators know how to use the good ones um 
So what are your thoughts here on Hawkinson before we move on? Yeah, I mean, I think that your point on the premium is important because, you know, a lot of people say, well, if you go from half point premium to full point premium, all the players go up in value, right? It's not like you can't just look at one player and think, okay, I'm getting a half point more. But when it comes to tight ends, it's a little bit different because you got tight ends that get volume, right? Like a, a lot of these tight ends, <clears throat> a lot of tight ends in general aren't necessarily targets for their team. They're, they're kind of... Um, Rebounders. You know, their play designs or the rebounders, exactly. They're, you know, possibly some red zone targets where you're going to get those touchdowns. But but Hawkinson is one of those few, Hawkinson, Goddard, you know, all, all those guys at the top. There's a reason why they're at the top, and he he's 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 there. For me, I think I'd take Goddard over Hawkinson personally. But yeah, I, I like you know, that. Yeah, I, I don't like that. But, but I'm not, you know, if somebody takes them, like you said, this is the, the fourth player. They're trying to solidify their lineup. I, I, I completely understand the narrative and I'm not going to hate on it. I don't think it's a, atrocious. I just, I don't think it's necessarily something I'm often doing. So. How good is Hawkinson in basketball? That's really what matters. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> if, if, if you could get Cooper Cup and then get Goddard, you know, I think that's a win. It, mm-hmm. You know, uh, as far as points scored uh, for right. The difference maybe between what I think Hawkinson volume potential is maybe a little greater than what Goddard's could be, but I I agree. I would say that I to to your guys's point that I'm not necessarily smashing the button on Hawkinson very often because I'm usually saying I'm 99 percent sure I can get Goddard in the fifth round. Right. Um, so I you know I, I I can I can take that uh, a little bit there. So. Uh, let's keep it moving here. We got uh, Devante at 5-1, Ramondre, uh, Tony Pollard, Nick Chubb, Kittle, Addison, Pittman, and then Christian Watson, Quentin Johnston, Trey Lance, Javante Williams, Kirk Cousins, Jameson Williams, Jared Goff. Any, anybody in that range stand out to you guys as somebody who you're not really interested in that pack? I mean, Christian Watson, for me, I, I have never once looked at taking him. Uh, I think he's got to be a little bit overrated here and i don't know what's going to happen i know big d doesn't like jordan love I, I i like that system i like that coach i think i don't know what to necessarily think about jordan love i don't i i'd rather like pass on him and take a couple stabs later on on do, dubs and reed if i have to uh, or one of the tight ends i think is a great both the tight take. ends i think this round looking at all these once like ramondre has gone and Goddard, then you've got your Pollard and Chubb and, and all the rookies and Trey Lance, what do we do with him? Javante, the injury, nobody likes Kirk Cousins. J-Mo, I love looking at J-Mo, but look at him down there at 601. You don't have to take J-Mo where you're taking some of these other guys. I think the fifth round is probably the best place to be trying to trade back into a better pool. Let me get Let me move my fifth back to the sixth and then maybe move my eight and ten up two rounds or something there's like a formula that you can do which we talk a lot more about on patreons but uh i I think this is a good spot to move back and not take christian watson (laughs) big d yeah i i completely agree with you i'm 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 not sold on green bay's offense this year in general but even even without that I, i think christian watson is a is an interesting talent but when i'm when i'm in the draft and i'm looking at the players that are around him he often he, and I think you're right, Jay, that, that fifth round, and especially towards the end of that fifth round, I'm, I'm, I'm often trying to find a way to kind of pivot out of there and get, uh, get a little, get a little something on top of, of dropping around, going down to the six, either doing the, the, the pick swap, like you said, or even looking at like a, now that we're in 2024, right. Maybe looking at a 2024 draft pick compensation or something to that effect. And, and just, in just holding that value because, um, I, I don't really see, like, you know, uh, let's see, 508, I can go back and get um, Chris Godwin in the seventh. I mean, you know, there's there's some players that we haven't talked about yet that are that are coming up. I could, I could solidify some, you know, uh, Kenny Pickett um, in the late seventh. And I, and I know we're talking about the fifth round, but that's my point is, like, if you can trade back and grab those guys maybe a tad earlier than what the ADP says, I think you're, you know, I for me, I feel I feel better about my build coming out of that than than I do uh, with him on my team. So, yeah, I, I like Christian Watson. I don't like the ADP there, um, so it's not necessarily negative. Christian Watson. I do think for love, the offense 
offensive line potentially should be still okay. Um, Love sat for a while. I, I actually don't hate that. I know nobody has patience anymore, but this is kind of the way things used to be done. Um, and he sat behind Rodgers, and and from all things that I've heard and read, it like it wasn't a very tenuous situation. Like they were pretty cool with each other, and and you know, hopefully, Love learned a little bit, and it's set up for him to be pretty successful here. Like Christian Watson came in, and last year, you know, a Christian Watson dubs, uh, you know, they they drafted. Jalen Reed and they drafted two tight ends uh, and they still have Dylan and and uh, Aaron, Jones. Aaron Jones, which I think they're going to probably turn Lean into a on. little bit more of a run heavy scheme uh, playing off p- play action and, you know, not having to be, you know, I'm not saying there's any. Obviously, it's great to have Aaron Rodgers, but when you have Aaron Rodgers, your system needs to be melded with his system, whereas now LaFleur can kind of run probably run the ball a little more and run his system a little more that that he likes and and give uh lance a chance to kind of acclimate a little bit but but it is set up around him but i I, you know the the variable of going from the unknown to you know one of the best to ever do it is is quite large and i'm i'm not interested in in uh investing that five in there the move back is fine with me there to you know, into the sixth here where I, maybe I could grab or maybe just a, just a little bit further back in the fifth where I could grab a, a Jameson or a, or a Burks um, would be fine with me. Or I would probably just take Burks in place of Christian Watson. That would be fine with me if I miss out on Michael Pittman. Um, I like Quentin Johnston. You know, Quentin Johnston, Michael Pittman, Addison all have, you know, Addison has Kirk and we think the offense is going to be good. We don't exactly know what's going to happen. So a little bit of question mark with Kirk moving forward. Pittman's got Anthony Richardson. We think that's going to be at least an okay situation, but how much worse could his situations get over the last couple of years? And Pittman's been nothing short of really strong. And then Quentin Johnson's tied to Herbert and all accounts looks really fucking strong. And I think a lot of people are going to be eating, eating crow there on their Quentin Johnston for stupid reasons of, of not really liking him. Uh, His hand placement. I think he landed in a good spot and is going to tear it up there. So all those guys would be more interesting than Christian Watson there for me. Uh, So I would, I would tend to agree there. Um, Let's keep it moving here in effort to, to wrap up here a little bit. uh, You, you mentioned uh, that you did not like Joe Mixon. So Joe Mixon is yeah. at 8-2, RB22, and, uh, you know, kind of becoming a little bit of a bigger fantasy uh, darling right now of like, oh, this guy's so forgotten. Is there a better workhorse that could be, you know, just getting the amount of touches that he could get right now in the spot that you're getting him? Uh, but I, I don't I have a feeling that it's not about that it's at all for you. It's volatile. So what? Yeah, it's it's all about the volatile. It's all it's all about the fifty five point game that he had last season, and and kind of pads a lot of his his stats that yes. you look back on. You know, I I think that um, again he's it, it's just it's not the player, um, it's the game. No, it's not it's not the <laughs> player. It's just it's just kind of where we're drafting him at. It's it's um, I, I get the the thought that man, if I can get Joe Mixon. Uh, you know, in the eighth round, I mean, he could be an RB one, but I, I just don't believe that. That that's, I think my problem is I, I don't believe that his performance, you know, his, the, the upside of his ceiling when, when we first thought about Joe Mixon comparison to what he's actually did on the field outside of one giant. And I'm going to say it, it's a giant game. Yeah. It, it just, just to me, it's, it's not there. Like he's, he's, he, he's capping at like an RB two level, most likely going to provide RB three. And that's if he plays, that's if he doesn't do something bonehead and, and he's not on the team at all anymore. Right. Like there's just so much, so much unknown for him. And, and when he does play, like I, I really just feel, and um, I know that there's a bunch of metrics on him and how inefficient he is and all that. And I'm not even really talking about that. I like to watch the game and I like to watch the players and it's just Get out. when I watch him, I know it's weird. It's crazy. But when I watch him, man, it's just, it just doesn't, it doesn't excite me, you know, like I, and, and I don't know that again, a, a lot of these things and a lot of the way that I play fantasy football, this is going to be shocking is that I play it because I want to have fun and I play draft the players that I like and that I have good feelings about. Um, and, and sometimes I don't look at the statistics. I, I go off what my gut says and, and Ooh, just Joe that's going to be a negative those, mark. Yeah. And I just, it, it just Joe Mixon is just one of those players where, um, you know, I, I, 
I watch him on the field when he is playing, and it doesn't feel like the offense really has a game plan for him. It's just more of a like, oh, he's here. We better do something with him here and here and there to to stretch out the run. But yeah. You know, um, so anyway, that's my rant. That's 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 where I feel on Joe Mixon. So, yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I think I think what some people are saying is valid. There is a path to good success. Now, like you said, the success, it really wasn't there last year. Uh, now, their offensive line did struggle. They've again tried to, you know, solidify that a little bit um, and figure that out uh, to, to an extent. I, I believe they did get a little better uh, at the back half of the season. Um, he, he had. He has all the talent in the world. Uh, I've been I've been high on Mixon in the past because the talent is there, the receiving ability is there, the offense is there. For the same reasons you like T. Higgins and Jamar Chase, you know, like he's tied to Burrow and a, and a good offense um, and a good scheme. Uh, but I, I, you said you know it's not the player, but I, I think it is for me. Um, yeah, I think he's shown you enough time after time that it just seems like you know. Then I and I don't I don't know him and I, I don't really like, you know, he could be an awesome guy. I have no idea uh, from what he's shown publicly doesn't seem to be seems like he does some pretty dumb shit. And how much does he care about, you know, it's just am I getting the check? How much does he care game in game out about the team, about winning, about being great, about longevity of his career? Uh, whereas, you know, somebody like an Austin Eckler. You know, just seems like he really fucking gives a shit and really wants to be as good as he can. Is constantly working to be better. Uh, where you know, I think there's there's two different kinds. Where there's probably more than two different kinds of guys, but like he just seems like a guy who is just so caught up and and kind of almost being cool uh, that you know it's cool for him not to really give a shit and to do dumb shit and like just get your fucking act together here and. And be a, a really good running back that we know you can be, uh, and I and I don't I don't know how much interest he has in being great, and I think that's a that's a big key to a lot of this. Although you know I'm sure some people don't like that because you can't really quantify it, but you know I think that is something that is some reasons why some players flame out earlier. Sometimes it's injuries and other things, but uh, let's not pretend that he hasn't been a little injured at times. In that 55 game, he really wasn't awesome for stretches of last year and then you look at the overall and the 55 point game really uh really helps his overall out i mean i mean it wasn't know. a terrible year i mean there it was okay some and let down games it was here okay and, and for where you're drafting him now it's I think, actually I think not it's, that bad the eight two i don't think you're really ever going to see that that's that's our mock drafts that we're, we're all kind of pushing him down a little bit but I think I think that's good. I think that's good value, and for what he was giving you at, at times last year, I think that that's pretty. You know, that's really freaking solid. Uh, for, Sleeper has him for what you could do seventy two overall, so that's like seven two. But there's seven. A, no, that's the sixth round. There's a really good possibility that Joe Mixon does something fucking stupid, and right. you know, you just don't have him on your team. Uh, for whatever reason, it seemed like that was about to be the case, and then that somehow he got out of it. Right, and, and then it was back, and then it kind of came it was back. Like, are, are they even going to keep him? And right, then, but they are, and but if that's, it, but I think that's that's the ahead. problem, though, is like you know, our ADP is eight, but I don't think he's going eight. I think in regular, oh, he's going seven oh two. That's going seven six round, and and six if eight twelve is, actually is too early for me. Then <laughs> then you know that six is way too early for me, and yeah, and so I mean that that's you know I. Again, I get the narrative, but I, I, I also feel like the same narrative is there with Cam Akers, and he can outscore Joe Mixon, in my opinion. You know, like, and they're going right around the same, same spot. So, um, I, I think that if it was me, I would probably go Cam Akers over over Joe Mixon if I had the choice, uh, or I would have the choice, right? Because I'm drafting. But if if those two players were on the board and I needed a running back, that's I'm, I'm going to go around. Uh, I'm going to go look at that. I'm going to look at a chain. I'm going to look at. Um, even Charbonnet, to be honest, over over Mixon for me on my builds just from, you know, and again, we're talking about average draft position. So I'm thinking of it from a startup perspective and I'm thinking of it from a not necessarily a long term, but even next season. Like I, I still think those players that I mentioned have a good shot to to stay up with him in in the in the points scoring season, but also some of them even to sur- surpass depending on what goes on. So Right. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I'm probably not even trying to take a running back in this range, maybe. I mean, Kendry Miller looks pretty fun down there. We'll see where, where Dalvin Cook lands. Maybe less volatility with Dalvin than Joe Mixon. I'm looking at Deontay, you know. I'm looking at 
I like Waller right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe you get your Mac Jones if you've waited on quarterback for this long. You know, um, not too many more players though that I really want to pull up above. Joe Mixon is another good little trade back spot there in the eighth round. Yeah, I, I think Mixon here is is a good value, and if it doesn't work, it's not it's not the end of the world here. Uh, but I I I do under understand the sentiments of that. It, I I can't say that I'm when I'm all, when we're doing these drafts, I'm like putting him in the queue and watching him pick after pick after pick to hope that I get him in the next pick. Like you said, I usually am looking at like a Deontay Johnson uh, in that area. Uh, around there and and so yeah no I, I Mixon's a tough one because I I think the ability and 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 the and everything else that goes along with the offense and all that stuff is all there but the the guy has just worn me the fuck out uh mm-hmm. the way he goes about things it's seemingly so you know why, why how much trust could I have in him uh so yeah I think that's that's kind of where it is for seemingly all of us um so uh, let's we get should, out of here. Wrap this up. Anybody yeah. got any last throws? Oh yeah, throw it. Any, g- any g- last throws? Give throw-ins. us your Jordan Love uh, disdain before we get out of here because he's right <laughs> here. He's at eight. He's at eight. He's at eight four. Uh, QB twenty three. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't have. I mean, we kind of talked about the Packers in general, and that tells you what my sentiment is on Love and and where where he's going. I just, I mean, he's at eight 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 four eight three somewhere in there. Um, you know, Derek Derek Carr goes around that range. Will Levis, Aaron Rodgers. Like all those type of players, not Will Levis. I said that because he was on the list. But yeah. Aaron Rodgers, um, you know, I, I, uh, Purdy, Mac Jones, Purdy. I Ooh. mean, Hawkins is even in there for me, even though he's an older receiver. Like, uh, I, I just think that for me, I get what people are saying. I get where you know he's he sat behind. So did so did Aaron Rodgers. He's he's this. He's that. But but for me, I just have no love for love. That's that's what it comes down to. No love for love. All right. Well, you know I love love, like in <laughs> like in general. I love love. Not not Jordan Love. I just love love. You know. It's all so, it's all right. It's underrated. Uh. Anyway. Has well, its moments. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's get out of here. We appreciate y'all. Uh, give us the five dollar holler or get on the the twitters if you want to hop in some of these mock drafts and we're going to be doing live uh, mocks as well. Uh, so you can participate in this this madness. Uh, tell us what you like, what you didn't like there. Uh, and we'll be doing, you know, ADP reviews for the next, until the season starts, once or so a month, because these, these will change. So we'll keep you abreast of our uh, the FFD ADP. Head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty. Get access to this ADP. Get access to the Discord channel. We'll have some various rankings potentially here soon, but uh, not pushing that just yet. But there are extra shows and a ton of Q and A going back and forth, and just a really good community uh, of fun, fun, fun people and, and good people. People yeah. helping people. People helping people. You got to be able to bounce your shit off uh, your ideas off other people, right. you know. And so you know if you're in the ballpark or not. And the worst thing you can do is make a dumb trade just to be trading. You know, I, that's like the easiest thing to tell people not to do. Yeah. Um, but a lot, lot of fun over there. Good crew. So help your boys out. Hit up uh, revelrybrewingco.com for the T-shirt. Check out my man, Big D. There it is right there. Uh, you guys got anything else? We appreciate you for joining us. No, let's say pod. hi to your mother for me. Let's get yeah? the FF out of here, and uh, we'll... Uh, Let me know. get that five-star sub. Uh, review? Uh, review. <laughs> we're uh, we're just, you know, we're trying to have conversations, and, and, and again, we've our, our motto has been... Uh, putting the fun back in fantasy uh, and not having the same opinions as everybody else and saying that, you know, you got to do this and you got to do that. You don't have to do anything. So, And in uh, very married to the game fashion, we wanted to do like a half hour show. It's been an hour. So, all right. <laughs> married to the game. Let's go. Appreciate y'all. Peace. <laughs>